Hi guys, welcome back to our second lesson on area, volume and perimeter. So just a recap on what we did on our last lesson. We looked at our two dimensional shapes and I got two questions for you to do yourself in the notes. So make sure before you move on to this one that you've practiced them, you've checked them, you've gone through them, okay? So still on strand three, looking at page number 75, okay? So jot over there. And today we're starting on our three dimensional shapes. So looking really at what we have on the board here so really really important for us now again and I'm going to keep saying this make sure the log tables are open to thrive on page 8 9 whatever pages we need today um, just so you know yourself where everything is here now I'm going to start over here with the first shape so I'm going to go shape by shape running down through them now the first shape I have here is a cube now just a, to recap on a cube I suppose just for ourselves cubes basically are met up of each of their faces, if I want to say that, i.e. faces here, are actual squares. So the lengths of all their sides are the exact same. So for example here, if I say that the length of this side is five for this cube. Now notice if an exam question says the word cube. That means that every side is five. The length, the width and the height are all five. So that's up to you to know. Now the formula for two things we're going to look for at today. We're going to look at the surface area and we're going to look at the volume. Now to start off with the surface area, what the surface area is, is the sum of the areas of each face, okay? By face, what I mean, this is your face here. Your face is, in this case, it's a square. So it's the sum of each of them faces, okay? And that's the same for every single shape. So the surface area is the area of every face, i.e. part of the shape you can touch, add it together. So sum means to add. So surface area, we're also going to look at the volume, okay? So the volume of each of these shapes, in this case, the cube. So if I start off here, I'm gonna start off with the surface area of this cube here. So I've noted down for myself, the lengths of these sides, because it's a cube, are all five. Surface area, my formula first, well, there's six faces on a cube times the formula for the area of a square, i.e. x squared, whatever the length squared, in this case, five to be squared. Six times five to be squared is going to give me 150. Now, in this case, I don't have units, but remember it's surface area, anything area is squared, so I might just pop down units squared for my examiner, just so my examiner can see exactly what I'm showing them, okay? And I don't want to get, again, as we mentioned in the last, in the last lesson, we don't want to get that hashtag minus one for forgetting that. Now onto our volume. Our volume, our formula here is x cubed, x being the length of the side. So here, if I fill it in, it's going to be five cubed. So that's the same as saying, just to point out, the length times the width times the height, okay? So x cubed. Now here, five cubed, as we said, five cubed is going to give me, so here, I'm just gonna pop it into my calculator, my brain is a little bit slow this morning. Five cubed is going to give me one, two, five. So 125, again, I don't have my units mentioned, so it's going to be units, and for volume, we need to be very, very cautious. It's going to be units cubed. So don't forget, if we are looking for volume, it is cubed, okay? Now our second one, so that's our cube done, dusted. Pause the video if you need to and take down this as an example if you want. Now our next shape is going to be a rectangle. Now a rectangle, unlike a cube, lengths, width and height is not all the same, okay? So just to point out. Now what we're going to do is we're looking at our surface area and we're looking at our volume. So to start off with the surface area. Surface area is the area of every single face added together. So it's the sum of the areas of all the faces. Now, as you might be, I hope you were able to see there, I said the height is six, the width is five, and the length is 10. And I might mention, I'm gonna say they're in meters. So I'm gonna give my units as meters here. If I look for the surface area, well, if you think of a rectangle, this side and the far side are going to be identical. So I'm gonna be saying two times 
the length, which is 10, times the width, so I'm actually going for the bottom part, and the top, is going to be 5. So that's going to do the top and the bottom in this case. That's going to find the areas of both of them. Plus, for the sum, 2 times the length, which I want to say is 10. Notice I have it labelled. My obsession with labelling shapes continues. Times the height, which is 6. Plus, finally, 2 times the width, which is 5. Times the height, which is 6. And that's my formula filled in. Now, notice there, you're multiplying each by 2 because there's always two identical faces in the rectangle. For example, the top, the bottom, the two sides this way, and two sides this way. And if you just check down there, you should have multiplied each of these numbers by each other once, okay? So just notice that for yourself. This formula, remember, isn't given to you. Plug this straight into your calculator. Um, 2 times 10 is going to be 20 times 5, 25. So what we're going to have here is we're going to have 280 centimetres and it's going to be, apologies, not centimetres, metres, metres, and that is going to be squared, okay? Now finally, the last one I'm going to look at here is my volume. So volume, my formula, length times width times height. Again, I'm going to fill it straight in. My length is 10, my width is 5, my height is going to be 6. I'm going to plug that straight into my calculator. When I plug that in, what I should get out is 300, and that's going to be meters. And because it is volume, it's going to be squared. So I'm just going to underline my two answers for my examiner there. Now, that's my cube done, my rectangle. I'm now going to go on to my prism. Now, prisms is something that kind of, I think, can confuse some people, but actually they're quite simple. So when we're looking at prism, we're just going to focus on the volume of the prism. Now, a prism isn't a defined shape really as such. It's not a shape like a sphere or as we had here, a cube or rectangle. Normally what it has is a face, and I'm going to call this here the face, or the cross-sectional area, which we recognise, something like a triangle, or sometimes it's a combination of two shapes. So we're going to have the area of the cross-section multiplied by the length. Now, I'm just going to fill it in here. I'm going to make up a couple of, I suppose, a couple of figures. So I'm going to say here, from here to here, on my triangle, is going to be, I'm going to say, 10. Okay? I'm going to say my perpendicular height, which is here to here, I'm going to say is, it looks a little bit longer, so I'm going to say 12. And finally, I'm going to say my length, which is here to here, and I notice I ran out of space, so I'm just calling it L, I'm going to say that's 20. Okay? So now, once I have that done, so that's it filled in, obviously your examiner isn't going to say to you, you know, make up a few figures there, they're going to put them in for you. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the area of the cross section, i.e. the face that I've marked it in red, okay, and we're going to multiply it by the length. Now, to start off, the first thing you have to, I suppose, spot is what shape is your cross section, okay? I'm going to keep referring to it as the face. Um, so if I do say face, it's the cross section. In this case, this is going to be a triangle. which means we're going to find the area of that triangle. And what we're going to do is we're going to multiply it by the length. Now, for this to be a prism, and there's a couple of notes for you to read over on page 74 regarding a prism, a prism must be the same. If you cut that down the side, it has to make the shape, same shape same face or cross section every single time. So just to point that out, but just make sure you have glance in your notes at that. Now here, area of a triangle. Well, area of the triangle is, I suppose our formula, is half times the base times the perpendicular height. Once we get that filled in, we're multiplying it by our length. Here, half times my base, I'm gonna label it, is 10. 
my perpendicular height is 12. Nearly your perpendicular height in again. And I'm going to stick that into my calculator. So half times 10 is going to give me 5. 5 times 12 is going to give me 60. So I'm going to pop 60 down there. Now I haven't forgot about multiplying that by my length. My length here is 20. So we're going to have our 20 times 60. 20 times 60 is going to give me 1,200. Check for my units. I wrote down absolutely none. So this is going to be units. Think about volume. Volume is going to be cubed, okay? Now, just to recap there, just to make sure, check your units at the end. If there's anything like decimal places that they said, always go back at the end. Now, that's a quick glance over what we're going to do. What we are now going to carry on to is 2.1 in your notes. It's on page 75. And basically what it does is it incorporates all what we have here. Now, on 2.1, and I'm just going to get my notes out in front of me, what we have is we have, we are asked, find that, highlight the word volume, find the volume of the shape below. Now, what they say is, and this is me reading the full question, it wouldn't be like me, take pi as 2.14, or apologies, take pi as 3.14. Now, I'm going to write this down or note this down for myself because there's a high possibility that I'll actually forget. So, pi is 3.14. They also say to me, give your answer to, if you need to highlight it, do there, two decimal places. I'm just going to note it down in the corner for myself, just so I don't lose any marks on decimal places. After that, they give me this diagram here, okay, which is very small in the notes actually. So here, what I'm looking at, I'm looking at a prism. I'm looking for the volume of this prism here. Now, how do I know it is a prism? And if you haven't stopped to read about your prism, do take two seconds. I know if I chopped down any section here, the cross section, I get the exact same shape, okay? So that's how I know it is a prism. Now, this prism is made up of two things to find volume. So the first thing for my volume, which it is made up of, is a semicircle. So I want to have to find the area of the semicircle, okay? So the area of that semicircle there. And I'm going to have to multiply it by the length. I'm going to put a bracket around this just so we can see us, ourselves fill it in. So I'm going to start off with my area of the semicircle. Now, because it's an area of a semicircle, what I'm going to do, as we did in the previous class, is I'm going to multiply it by a half. So I'm getting half the area of the circle. Now, the area of the circle is pi or squared, okay? So multiplying that by a half because I'm only looking for a semicircle, so half a circle. And I'm going to multiply that by, I'm just going to fill it in here, the length. The length you'll notice here, L, is going to be 25. Okay? Now, filling in my information, I'm going to find out what my semicircle, the area of it is. It's going to be half, times. Now they told me what they wanted for pi. Pi is 3.14. Multiply by. Now I need to check what my radius is. From the centre to the circumference I can see here is 8. Okay? So 8. So my radius is 8 to be squared. Okay? Going to multiply that by my length. 25 here. Now all I have to do from there, and I do want to show my examiner step by step, I'm going to plug into my calculator my area of a semicircle. Plug that in, and what I should get out here is 100.48. So that's my area of my semicircle. I'm going to multiply that by my 25, because I don't want to drop that along the way, so just be very, very cautious of that yourself. And once I have that multiplied, or these multiplied together, what I'm going to get out is 2,512 metres squared. Now guys, that's the end here, and I'm actually just going to take two seconds, just double check that I have that popped in correctly.
There we go. You know me, I just have to double check. Yeah, so actually came out as a whole number there. So 2,512 meters squared, so actually rounded itself up rather than going to two decimal places, which is why I actually just double checked because obviously I didn't read it right earlier on. Now, that is a question on our prism. Now, what I want you to do before going on to our next lesson is I want you to pop over to page number 26. On page number 26, and I want you to try this on your own, you, or apologies, 76. I want you to try exercise 2.2. Now, I just wanna talk you through exercise 2.2 for a second, just so to give you an idea. Now, when you look at the face of this shape, the face is neither, it's no shape that we know, okay? But what you should be able to see is that it's a rectangle and a square. So to find the area of that face, you're actually going to have to split it up into finding the rectangle and then adding on the area of the triangle. Your length in this case is going to be two meters. Now guys, I want you to start with that question, give it a go, so your best shot, and all the solutions are actually clearly laid out, as I mentioned before, in the solution page on the back of this chapter. So guys, looking forward to talking to you in our next lesson, which will be on, on our online lesson number three, where we're going to go on to a cylinder, cone, and sphere. Thanks very much, guys.